She touched the hem of the garment. For her to touch the hem of the garment, what must she do? She must go down on her knees to touch the hem of the garment. It's not easy. Saints, today, if people want to receive healing, do they need to do likewise? Like the woman with the issue of blood, do they have to press through the crowd, find where Jesus is? I mean, of so many people, sometimes you can mistake a person for somebody. So instead of touching Jesus, you'll be touching somebody else. My God! After you touch somebody else, husband finished. The wife will be provoked. And if you touch, instead of Jesus, touch another woman. Even got more provocation. So you can imagine, it was not easy. But thank God He has made it easy for us. Saints, we don't have to go on our knees, crawl to touch Jesus. Because Jesus is not outside somewhere. After He died and rose from the dead, whosoever believes in Jesus Christ becomes a new creation. And he comes into our hearts and he dwells inside us. Like we say, we are not seeking for visitation because he is our habitation. Amen. But there is a spiritual principle or truth for us to garner from the actions of the woman. The garment of Jesus speaks to us something in the spiritual. It represents a spiritual reality. Garment speaks of Righteousness. When the woman touched the garment of Jesus, it speaks to us she was touching righteousness. The unclean touch the clean. The unrighteous touch the righteous one. Saints, can you see? Even from that aspect, it is so easy to become clean. Did she have to pray long hours, fast many days before she got healed? She just had to touch Jesus. One touch, she was enough. And that one touch wrought healing and wholeness to her body. All our works of self-effort are not enough for us to receive the blessings of God. Just one touch healed the woman. That is the grace of God. But God has something better for us in the new covenant. That woman was healed by touching the garment. We in the new covenant are healed not because we touch his garment. We are healed because his garment is touching us. 
and has touched us. Glory to God. Amen. Why is that so? His government is touching us. Because the government is righteousness. We have put on the government of His righteousness. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's touching us all the time. Amen. Amen. If you can see that, you will not be sick anymore. Hallelujah. And there's something more than just not being sick. Now, for those who can see this revelation, righteousness is the way to be healed. You seeing that? In a sense, when the woman touched righteousness, which was typified by the garment, she was healed. Touching righteousness wrought healing. Why is that so? Because sickness and disease are the product of sin. Righteousness eradicates the results of sin, which is sickness and disease. Once you touch righteousness, you touch the blessing of divine healing and divine health. Give him the praise. So, do we have to directly focus on healing? Yes, we could have probably or still trying to get healed by focusing on healing. Saints, we are taught in the scriptures to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Keep our eyes upon him. But there is something that Jesus di uh, died to give us primarily. What is the primary thing that Jesus gives to every born again believer? Uh -uh. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, He was made sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made we might be made the prosperity of God that we may make the health of God now the focus is on righteousness that we may be made the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. You see, I want more than righteousness. I want prosperity. I want healing. I want blessing. When God made us His righteousness, it doesn't mean that healing, prosperity and blessing are not inside there. It comes in the package. Hallelujah. All the blessings of God are contained in the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen. Give Him the praise. Hallelujah. And all saints, If you can catch a revelation 
and focus on your identity of the righteousness of God, you receive your healing. Because it takes your mind off the thinking that you are sick. If we keep on focusing that I need healing, I need healing, I must claim the healing scriptures. Then what is our thinking? Our thinking is that we are still sick. And if you think we are still sick, as a man think of in his heart, so he will be. For us to overcome, we got to get our minds away from what we want to overcome. For instance, I share one thing that I personally overcame. Overcame the temptation of eating The, the fruit with the sweetest smell. <laughs> the Malaysian fruit, durians. I used to love durians. I would buy 20 durians home <laughs> to eat. And I felt that I was overindulgent in durians. So I wanted to overcome. I wanted to be redeemed from durians. So I was taught to speak the word, confess the word of God, you know, to overcome temptations. So I started speaking. I overcome durance. I overcome durance. I overcome durance. And you know what? As I keep on saying overcome durance, durance, I kept on thinking about durance. <laughs> and when I kept on thinking about durance, every time I smell it, I instantly look for the durance. And I kept on eating durians. Because my mind was focused on durians. So parallel. you got to get your mind off what you want to overcome. So instead of saying, I overcome durians, I focus my mind on Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I said, I come to you, Jesus. I come to you, Jesus. Now somebody will say, well, you know, Jesus is already inside you. <laughs> now I'm not talking about our position in Christ in that sense. We understand that Jesus is already in us. It's just that I'm coming to you to depend upon you. Trusting in you. I want to worship you. I want to praise you. So I started speaking about Jesus. Talking about Jesus. 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 I just spoke about Jesus. I love you. And you love me. Jesus, I know. You love me. I'm more than a conqueror to Jesus Christ. When I kept on speaking the word of God. By the way, the word during is not in the Bible. <laughs> Confession is you speak the same word like God speaks. So I started speaking the word of God. And you know what? I got durians out of my mind. Amen. When you get that out of your mind, you don't think about it anymore, then it's no longer inside you. Amen. Did you see that? Now, the woman touch righteousness. We are even more blessed. We don't have to touch. The righteousness is already inside us. And it's touching us, pervading our whole being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. From spirit, soul, and body, the righteousness of God is enveloping us in Christ Jesus because in Him, in Him, we live, we move, and we are being in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah! Amen. Paul's emphasis in all his teaching was on what? 
Healing? Which one was more emphasized in Paul's letters? Healing or righteousness? Righteousness. You can check it up, get a concordance, make a research. Verify what I say. The word righteousness and other words that is connected with it, like justification, is the same word in Greek. It's mentioned over 100 times. The word healed or healing is mentioned in Paul's letters only four times. But yet, which is more emphasized in the church? The four times or the hundred over times? One? The four time one has been emphasized like 40 times, 400 times. Or thousands of times have been emphasized. Where righteousness was mentioned so many more times, it's not that much emphasized. But God is bringing the church back to the right emphasis. And the right emphasis is the emphasis on righteousness. Hallelujah! Amen. Even then, when Paul talked about healing, in case you're wondering where in the episode is the word healing found, healed. Where is it found? 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The gifts of healing. Even then, the gifts of healing are intended purpose by God for believers or for unbelievers. Primarily for the unbelievers. Secondarily, in case we cannot grasp the revelation and we are not able to believe that that can be used. But don't lose track of God's objective. It is this. Healing primarily is for the world. What is for the church? Divine health. Amen. Because we are the body of Christ. Hallelujah. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The life of Jesus flows to us. Hallelujah. Give Him praise. Amen. Give Him glory. Hallelujah. Now, when you look back in the Old Testament, when God called Abraham and made him the father of many nations and God blessed him and promised him the blessings of Abraham. What are the blessings of Abraham? You can name it, wow, that they will possess the land, that they will be rich and they will experience his protection. But what do you think is the first blessing of Abraham? Bible says, Abraham, believe God. And it was counted to him as righteousness. So what was the first blessing that Abraham re received when he believed God? He received a baby. No, no, no. <laughs> we always think like that. Abraham believed God, right? And his faith gave him a baby. The baby comes later. The first gift that he received was the gift of righteousness. Hallelujah! And then following that righteousness that he has received came the production of baby Isaac. 
Amen. And all other blessings, hallelujah. So if you and I can see the preciousness of being made the righteousness of God, hallelujah, we would have everything we ever need, amen, in this life, hallelujah. So what does it mean? Do you need to go around the world, hither and neither, to seek for blessing, to seek for prosperity, to seek for healing? You don't need to. Because they are all contained in the one package of the gift of righteousness. And the gift of righteousness is already inside you. Hallelujah. All the blessings of God are inside you already. Amen. Hallelujah. I will read in the book of Romans about the gospel of God is the power of salvation in Romans chapter 1. And let us see here the place of righteousness again. Romans 1 and verse 16. Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God and the salvation to everyone that believeth to the Jews first and also to the Greek. For therein is, therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Amen. And you see this? In the gospel of God is the revelation of righteousness. That doesn't exclude healing everything, right? It's all inside there. Let's not miss the mark on this. When you look at a gospel, what do you see attached to the gospel? Prosperity. Hence, there's a term called prosperity gospel. Healing gospel. Feel good gospel. Social gospel. Nothing wrong with all this. Because God is a God of prosperity. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is El Shaddai. He is God of healing. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the great physician. But what God wants us to see, the prime attachment to the gospel is, is a righteousness gospel. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Give him the praise. <laughs> the gospel that we preach to the world is to preach to them that God has sent Jesus to die on the cross to take upon sin that you don't have to be in sin anymore. If you believe in Jesus, you become the righteousness of God in Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Saints, when people sin, what do they do? Run away from God or run to God? Adam did that. And most people today are still like Adam. And sometimes, sadly, even Christians, when they sin, they run away from God. They hide themselves. When you sin, don't run away from God. But what should you do? Run to God? Yes, we are, we are encouraged to run to God. You can run to God. But I have better news for you. If you sin and you're running away from God, you can never run away from Him because He is running after you! He is running after you! He 
Amen. Can't you see that? God came looking for Adam. So even before you run to him, he has already run to you. The truth. The word of God says, all we like sheep have gone astray. Is there anyone that seeks God? Is there anyone that runs to God? There was none. But thank God he ran to us. You can see this picture in the parable of the prodigal son. The father saw him coming back. What did the father do? The father didn't say, I'm going to turn my back to him. See whether he will really come back all the way or not. I'm going to wait until he pays his dues. I'm not going to face him yet. He should be punished for his sins. The father didn't have such a stance towards him. When the father saw him, what it means? That means the father was always looking for his son. When the father saw him coming back, if he was doing something that was very important, if he was engaging in his business, if he had a deal that worth a fortune, he dropped everything and the father ran. Father ran after the son. Why? Because his son is most precious to him. He loves his son more than anything else. And God loves us so much. He doesn't want you to have any reservation of coming to him. This is the God that we worship. That we need to see. Romans chapter 10. Verse 9 says this. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto, unto righteousness. You don't have to work for righteousness. You just believe. That is the grace of God. We believe. Saints, many people are believing for healing, believing for prosperity, believing for blessing, believing for many things. If you can see it, if you believe for this one thing, you believe unto righteousness. You have everything, hallelujah. Amen. You have everything, hallelujah. He that spared not his son, how shall he not freely give us all things, give him praise? He is worthy. He is worthy of it all. He is worthy, hallelujah. There is no God like unto him, amen.